I don't think that song's ever going to die. Nora Jones has recorded it, and it is on Will Callery's new CD, Rider Coming In. I love this review from uh, the Midwest Record in Chicago. Quote, hey, remember Bill, Bill Callery, who recorded and wrote for Willie Nelson and hung out with the rest of the outlaw gang? A few tough miles later, he's back as Will, and he still knows how to write some authentic Western soul that reaches out and touches you. His first new collection in a million years finds old compadres like Jerry Jeff Walker dropping by for a reprise. Another commentator said, the bad news is that there ain't nothing else like this anymore. <laughs> I'm so glad we have it here today. And the man, the singer, the songwriter, the survivor, come on in here, Will. <laughs> so wonderful Thank you. to have you. It's good to be here. I had to do a double take because you look and sound like Chris Christopherson, uh, well, whom I met years ago. I think he's a bit of a survivor, too. And you guys had a pretty close association. In we knew each slice. other. Uh, I knew Chris in, uh, in 69, 68, 69. I met him in Nashville. We were both living on Music Row, 16th, 17th Avenue. Okay. And uh, it, it was as Chris was, was climbing the ladder, he was coming into a lot of success. And uh, I lived in the apartment. It was an apartment for songwriters. <laughs> And uh, if you got a if you got a, a, a place there, if you got an apartment there, then you knew you were on the up and coming list. What did they call you guys? The boys that made the noise on well, 16th Avenue. Well, I hung with some of the boys that made the noise. I guess I was one of them. Actually, that was uh, studio musicians, and I wasn't a stu studio guy. I was I was a writer, and still am, you know. Not then, but uh, and, uh, but anyhow, Chris lived know. upstairs. I lived downstairs. We knew each other. You know, we weren't bosom buddies, but uh, and then later in, in Texas, uh, of course, he was part of the Willie Nelson thing, and and then we ran together some, and and uh, uh, did a few things together. You know, played a lot of gigs together. You are now living just 120 miles north of Nashville. I am in indeed. Kentucky. Well, I grew up in Kentucky, so that we moved back there. Yeah, we live there in the country. Very interesting. Um early years you were raised by your grandparents uh, i was raised to my grand by my grandparents until i was in terre haute indiana i was born in terre haute i was raised by my grandparents great great household wonderful family and my grandmother uh, the presence of the lord was there in that house mm -hmm. but I, I i left that house at the age of six or seven and my my mother remarried and you she, you she never married. knew your dad. I never well. knew my father. He was uh, he flew B-17s out of England over Germany. World War II. World War II, and he uh, he never came home. He was uh, he'd flown a lot of missions, and uh, uh, but I do feel like I know him. You said that in the green room. I do feel like I know him. I believe he made it, and uh, you he mean, was 23 years. You mean old. to heaven? Uh, of course, yeah. I believe he made it. Is it hard? Is that something you carried, not having your dad? <clears throat> Well, I believe the Lord used it. I don't know. I mean, you know, I can say how I think what the Lord did, but I think the Lord used it to to put another what 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 C.S. Lewis calls that otherness, mm -hmm. you know, in me because I was probably looking for my father somewhere. You know, I saw things that other people didn't see. You know, I saw I saw. Uh, uh, I, I was a crick bed dweller. I loved crick beds, and I would dwell in, you know, spend a lot of time outside. I loved the outdoors. But anyhow, you know, I'd see an opening in the woods, and I would think, man, there's probably things over there I've never seen before in my life, you know. And so I would go to those places, you know, and I'd look for strange animals and, and things like that. But I was always looking for something uh, in the spiritual realm, mm. and I still am. Uh, now you got a little waylaid in this in this searching because uh, you talk about being a pretty seasoned drinker in high school and a barroom brawler on weekends. Yeah, yeah. I started drinking whiskey at twelve. Uh, Your stepdad. My, ste my stepfather ran a whiskey distillery, and I started drinking whiskey yeah. at twelve. And uh, you know, I had my. I remember when I had my first shot of whiskey and my first uh, cigarette, and 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 that's how it came. That's how I came up. Mm. You know, I was raised on the Ohio River. And uh, right on the banks of the the Kentucky side, and I was a little river rat. I loved the river, <laughs> and I, you know, we, there were four major distilleries at that time in a town of eight thousand. Oh my! 
And uh, so it's the thing you did. Well, Kentucky right across the line, you know, whiskey horses and something else. I don't know what else. <laughs> <laughs> you joined the army, and you say you you got out alive in 1967. Well, that's not one of my favorite things, you know. Mm. But uh, yeah, I was in I was light infantry 63 to 67, and then and then uh, I uh, got out and uh, went up and down the west coast of. Uh, California, actually from Oregon, playing honky tonks and bars, and uh, yeah. uh, met Arlo Guthrie. Uh, oh, everybody was out. They there. were all out. Everybody there. was out there at that time. I mean, it wow. was just like you know. Uh, the who's was, who? Uh, well, it wasn't who's who then. You know, it was just uh, Little Feet, jo Lowell George. You know, they lived in Topanga Canyon. Uh, Woody Guthrie, Ramblin' Jack Elliott, uh, all these guys. I played the clubs that they played. And just ran into him, and we all played together, and we all, you know, I, I ran with him and opened shows for him. It says I toured with him, but I didn't do a lot of touring with him. I just traveled with him some and Jam opened some and shows for him. Yeah, it was not, a, it was not, they weren't like worldwide tours or anything like that. Well, you know, Andy Andrews has just been talking about success, <laughs> and, and you and Danny and I were talking about just you know your great musicianship and the opportunities you've had and. What, what the key is there, and you both seem to land on circumstances, right place, right time, but you're both so gifted musically. Well, you just you. seem to be born musicians. Well, my father was a musician, uh, a professional musician. My father, who was a B-17 pilot, he, he played uh, trumpet and, and sax, and my grandfather, who was horse cavalry in the old days, was an incredible musician. He, he was a big band stuff. Uh, uh, of the 40s and uh, he was very very famous and he was very uh, very played with a lot of big bands he, even, uh, he played with Fats Waller even oh you're kidding uh, he, really? yeah but he was a schooled musician hated country music <laughs> we won't <Yeah>. tell <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure rubbing shoulders and just jamming with some of these people who are now legends uh, iron sharpens iron for just uh, you know Austin Texas of the 1970s has been compared to and this is in the world now, this is not spiritually speaking, but in those days it's been compared to, 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 to France, Paris, France of the 30s, musically. I mean, there was Django Reinhardt, there were all these people, there were all these bands. And, and, and uh, when I, I, I heard, I was in 69, I was a staff writer for April Blackwood Publishing. Right. which was Columbia Records. That was before I, I went on to Columbia. It was just a separate, separate time, separate thing. But I went, to, uh, I went to Austin, Texas, because I heard there was something going on down there. And I uh, got into town, and my partner, Roger Bartlett, we had a duo called Lusaza, L-U-S-A-Z-A, Lusaza -A -A, Goose. Very interesting name. And, 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 and we hit town, and, uh, and our logo was a picture of a goose with a joint hanging out of his mouth oh, no. and a bottle of whiskey in his hand. Oh. And it was called Lusaz, and that was our duo. And we hit town, we st and Rogers, Roger became uh, Jimmy Buffett's band leader oh. of the 70s. Mm. Margaritaville. Yes, yeah. And Roger is a great songwriter, fine musician. And we hit town, and we started, there was a place called Castle Creek, and there were all kinds of other clubs there, and we played all of them. And we, you know, we just hit town, started opening shows for Jerry Jeff Walker. Lowell George and Little Feet were in town all the time. Doug Kershaw, just everybody was coming in to Austin, Texas from everywhere. And we were opening shows for them. This sounds like a great party, but... It was, it was wide open. It was wide open. Nobody cared what you did, uh, including... Uh, it, it just was not a time to be busted. You know, there was... People weren't even... The law wasn't even thinking in those terms until later, until everything started getting out of hand. But it was wide open. It was, it, it was a time of great creativity. And uh, I had no idea I wasn't on the ground floor of anything. I had no idea I was, I was be becoming a part of musical history. Mm -hmm. I, I, had, I didn't know any of that. I was just doing what I did. But Jerry Jeff, I'd open for Jerry, and, and he said, well, you know, uh, I think I'll, I'd like to do the first showboat. I said, fine, he'd do the first showboat, you know. And then I started going to the studio, and then I started traveling with him. He said, where are you staying? And I said, well, I'm on the couch circuit. What and, does that uh, mean, the well, couch that circuit? means I really didn't have any place. That you nothing had. I was sleeping on people's couches. Oh, oh. And, and, 
And he said, well, come stay at my place. And this was before he was married. So I went and stayed two years. <laughs> now, I hate to turn this, this just path to glory into a hard reality. Quote, maximum mammon yeah. began to support an already king-size cocaine habit with heroin on the side. Amen. This got it to a true. very bad place.